Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is door. D double O R. Really? You bet your life! For more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present the best of Groucho. Yes, friends, it's a Groucho summertime. By popular demand from your letters, from rating histories, and the acclaim of critics, the DeSoto Plymouth dealers bring you selected shows from You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. Groucho Marx is on vacation, friends, and will return in the fall. Until then... It's fun and laughs each week this summer as we proudly present some of the best of Groucho's past shows. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That's me, Groucho Marx. Again with fifteen hundred dollars for one of our couples tonight, George. Who's supposed to try for it? Couple of newlyweds, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Holtzhauer, right? Right. Right. Meet Groucho Marx, folks. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word while we're talking, you'll divide a hundred dollars between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Yeah, Robert, you're you're a newlywed, eh? That's right, sir. Where, where are you from? I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And your name is Arlene? That's right. You're a newlywed, too, huh? Oh, yes. You're a very pretty girl, you know that? Thank you. Did you know that? Oh, I've heard it, to be honest. You don't have to be honest with me, you know. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't propose to be honest with you. Where are you from, Arlene? I'm a native daughter. I was born right here in Los Angeles. Uh-huh. How, old, how old are you, Arlene? Twenty-two. And uh, how old are you, Bob? I'm twenty-seven. What do you do for a living? I go to college. That's the way you make a living? <laughs> you mean you're on the football team? <laughs> are, are you working, Arlene? No, I go to college, too. Oh, you mean you're both on the team, huh? <laughs> what are you taking in college besides Bob? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm taking a major in medicine. You're taking a major in, in medicine, huh? Is your husband aware of this? <laughs> no, I mean a major like her. <laughs> Are you taking him for everything he's got? Or just... <laughs> no, it's the line of study you pursue in order to get your degree. You pursue the major. Right? <laughs> Who are you taking in college, Bob? A lieutenant in the wax? <laughs> no, I, I'm studying law. Oh, well, I don't blame you. She's going to carry on with the first major. <laughs> At least you'll be able to sue the guy. <laughs> do you intend to become a lawyer when you graduate? Yes, I do. Why? Well, I think that the uh, practice of law is... Very good feel for a young man. And I think that I'd probably make a good lawyer. Why are you under that impression? <laughs> I like to help people in their troubles. And oh, that isn't what a lawyer to... does. <laughs> what do they teach in law school besides ambulance chasing and jury bribing? Oh, uh, we don't learn that in law school. You don't, huh? No. Well, then you won't get any of my business. Eh? <laughs> well, what do you learn in, in law school? Well, we study several courses. There's evidence and criminal procedure and domestic relations. Don't you learn any legal terms? Let me hear you talk like a lawyer. I mean, give me some shyster talk. You know? <laughs> we don't talk shyster, right? I can give you some uh, terms such as... such as. Uh... I like a lawyer that gets this bod quickly. Huh? <laughs> You have times like what? Well, there's habeas corpus and nola contender. Nola contender. I knew her well. Eh? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. A little Spanish girl. I wonder where she is tonight. Huh? Well, nola contender actually means that there's... What does a, it mean? It means there's no, no fight, there's no contest. That's nola, all right. <laughs> No fight and no, or she'd go to any movie I suggested. Huh? <laughs> you, uh, you mentioned domestic relations. What, what do you learn there, Bob? Well, we learn mostly about 
divorces. Oh, then mm -hmm. this major is worrying you, eh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Arlene, you ought to be ashamed. Now, I don't, I don't want to be nosy, but, uh, but if you both go to college, uh, what do you live on, uh, in addition to love, I mean? It's well, a very substantial father, but kind of thin around the edges, huh? It's, uh, it is pretty hard, but, well, we have the GI Bill for Bob. And... GI Bill? You mm -hmm. get that the first of the month? Eh? Public law 346. Oh. <laughs> she gets the money and he knows the number of it. Eh? <laughs> well, I'm glad you straightened me out. Is the GI Bill enough to support uh, you two lovebirds? Well, not very well, but uh, we managed to squeeze by. I imagine you do. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, as soon as you finish school, uh, Bob, are you uh, planning on hanging up your shingle immediately? Well... I'd like to, but I have to pass the bar. Well, that's a good place to get shingled. Right? <laughs> Suppose you were called to defend uh, Arlene in court. Go ahead. Let's see your defender. I'd have to know what she was charged with. Well, uh, I wouldn't know that, eh? <laughs> Maybe brown celery tonic. You know? <laughs> How long did you say you've been married? We've been married now about a month. Would you say that uh, Bob is a perfect husband, Arlene? Well, yes, he is. <laughs> Suppose he told you he had to stay after school some night, and the next day your best friend told you she saw him dancing to Charleston with her. A dazzling redhead at Ceros. What would you say to that? I'd say that couldn't be my husband. Why not? He's a man, isn't he? <laughs> yes, but he doesn't dance to Charleston. <laughs> Well, he's more of a man than I thought he was. <laughs> well, uh, Arlene, I predict your marriage will be a howling success, especially if you ever catch him doing the Charleston with a redhead. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at $1,500. Right now, I want you to pay close attention to Fenneman. It's the greatest advance in driving ease and convenience since the self-starter. That's what people are saying about the sensational new DeSoto feature, Full Power Steering that makes turning the steering wheel practically effortless. Think of it. With DeSoto Full Power Steering, you can turn the wheel of either the DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the Power Master 6 using just one finger. It's literally as easy as dialing a phone. DeSoto Full, not partial, but full power steering works even when the car is at a standstill. That means to you far easier parking and easier driving at all speeds and over all kinds of roads. Try it. Experience the novelty of effortless steering. DeSoto Full Power Steering. Tomorrow, visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and ask to take the five-mile trial in either the mighty DeSoto Fire Dome 8 with a new 160-horsepower V8 engine or the handsome DeSoto Power Master 6. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. The low-priced car, most like high-priced cars. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Fenneman, explain the rules. All right, each of our three couples has $20. They've got as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high can build you $20. You selected nicknames of states as your category. 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 <laughs> That's an Indiana category. <laughs> Where they make all that steel. Here's your first question. Uh, how much will you bet of the 20 $10. $10. And I talk right up now. All right. Here we go. Uh, what state is known as the Sunflower State? Kansas. Kansas is right. <laughs> and we said along the way, I have $30. All right, remember, you're going for $1,500. Uh, how much of the 30 will you try? Let's try. Talk it up, kids. 25. Talk it up. 25. <laughs> okay. 25. What state is known as the Empire State? New York. New York is right. They're <laughs> climbing, too. They have $55. All right, you're climbing. you got $55. Here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? Here they come. They're on the inside now. They're coming on the side. <laughs> That's not a game, is it? How much are you going to bet? Eh? 50. 50 you going to bet? Mm -hmm. Have they got that much? Yes, $55 they the have. land sakes alive. <laughs> what state is known as the Hoosier State? Indiana. Indiana! <laughs> and now they have $105. Now, 
You have zoomed to the pinnacle of success here. You've got a hundred and five dollars. How much are you going to bet? We'll bet a hundred. This girl must be a German extraction. She likes a pinnacle of... Ex- How much are you betting? A hundred. A hundred dollars? Hey, you're really gamblers, huh? I'm more nervous than they are. I'll bet you are. What state is known as the Buckeye State? Ohio. Ohio! Ohio! Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't you kids go too far away because you may get a chance at the big question later on in the show. Thank you very much. Gotcha, our next couple has been off stage. They have. So they don't know the secret word is door. Maybe they'll say while they're out here talking to you. We invited some florists to the program tonight, and just before some we went florists? on... No, florists. Oh, florists. I Fallis... said florists. Yeah, I wonder how we're going to get some trees in there. Huh? We... <laughs> the studio audience selected of these florists that we invited to the show, Mr. Jack Dortonak. His partner is a housewife from the studio audience, Mrs. Mary Fraternick. Come on in here, folks, and meet Groucho Marx, right over here. Welcome, kiddies, to your Bet Your Life. And if you say the secret word, you'll split $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Jack uh, Dortonac, huh? What kind of a name is that, Dortonac? Well, that's French. Oh, it is, huh? That's French. How, you, how would you pronounce it over there? In France, yeah. uh, Dortignac. Dortignac, yeah. Well, Dortignac yourself, huh? <laughs> and Mrs. Mary Fatanic, huh? That's right. Is that a Greek Fatanic, or is it, uh... <laughs> it doesn't say anything about that here, no. You mind if I call you Mary? Oh, no, you can call me anything. <laughs> Okay. Well, tell me, Sam, where are you from? Huh? <laughs> I think Sam is a nice name for him. <clears throat> where, where are you from, Sam? Uh, Mary? Uh... Me, I'm born and raised in Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> Jack, let's talk about the flower business. Where, where is your shop? Must uh, be on the main stem, I imagine. 9526 Santa Monica. It Bowl, isn't on the main <laughs> stem, man. Eh? No, no, no. Not on the main stem. Where that, is it? Beverly Hills, 9526 Santa Monica Boulevard. Oh, well, that's uh, right up in my neighborhood. How, Chris, is the fl- how is the flower business? Picking up. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I was hoping, <laughs> hoping you'd say business was bad so I could say the flower business has gone to pot. <laughs> I didn't do much better with that than I did with the main stem. <laughs> Now, let's try it once more. How is the flower business? Well, it could be better. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear your business is going to pot. Huh? <laughs> now, isn't that better than cheating me out of a joke? Huh? You want to try main stem again now and see what we can do with that? Seriously, now, how is the flower business? Picking up. <laughs> oh, no, we're not going to go through that again. <laughs> Does your husband ever bring you flowers, Mary? Oh, no. I'm allergic to flowers. I sneeze. I can't stand flowers. <laughs> now, what about the flowers on your hat if you're allergic to flowers? Well, he's a phony. Don't pay no attention to these. <laughs> Jack, uh, what's the most popular flower? Roses. Well, why, why is that, Jack? Well, I guess because red roses denote love and yellow roses jealousy... White roses, purity. I see. Did, did you know roses were green? Well, I've never seen any green ones. <laughs> well, I happen to know that roses are green. I see them hanging on our line every Monday. <laughs> That's a good thing about Mary. <laughs> It's comforting to have Mary on the show. She laughs before every joke. <laughs> well, that's a nice attitude. What about you, Mary? Oh, Anything I, embarrassing ever happened yeah, to you in addition a, to that hat? I have a pretty uh, uh, sad one. I don't know how sad it was, but I happened to be on a crowded street car and I couldn't hardly get in the door myself. <laughs> And you and Mr. Uh, Jack uh, Tortinak, uh, you're going to split $100 here between you, huh? Oh, thank you Don't very much. Don't forget Jack much. is 50 sure. of that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, what happened to you, Mary? You were trying to squeeze through a door well, and you got yourself $50. I got my seat on a streetcar and there was a lady and there was a little boy hanging on to a skirt. So I felt sorry, so I picked up the little boy and put the boy on my lap. Said to the mother, I said, my, your little boy is such a How do you know it was lovely. the mother? Well... <laughs> 
I, 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 sure it was. I said, my! I said, what makes you so sure? Well, Can this... a woman get on a streetcar with a kid without being the mother of it? Well, that's possible, but this happened to be, I know now, if you let me tell my story. But you didn't know then, did you? Well, I think... Well... Where were you in the night of January 9th? <laughs> Who can play at that game? Now? Anyhow, why he, uh, why I picked up the little boy and set the little boy on my lap, and I said, my, that boy is such a lovely, behaved child. Why, she said he should be. He's 32 years old. Here he was a little midget, and I didn't even know. It. <laughs> well, at least she got him on for half air. <laughs> Mary, that's a very cute little story. Now, tell us another one, huh? Oh, I got a... a I'm going to tell you about the hat. Now, you ain't heard nothing yet. You really? <laughs> I you know, can believe that, huh? No, but really, one of, my, uh, one of my girlfriends died, you see, and you oh, that's know... That's pretty funny, huh? <laughs> that was a good joke on her, too. Huh? <laughs> I happen to have this flower hat on, you know, so I rushed to the store, and I bought an all-black hat, and I happened to be at the funeral parlor, and I put this hat on a chair... And someone accidentally put it on the coffin. And I had to go to the undertaker and take my hat. Now I got my hat back. <laughs> well, going around stealing hats from a stiff is a pretty low <laughs> Now, let's see how well you two make out in the battle for the $1,500. You've got to work together as a team and run your $20 into more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. The newlyweds won $205. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You select the <laughs> sections of cities of the world. Is that right? Now, you have $20. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Talk up, kids. How much? Five. Five dollars. All right. In what city do you find the Back Bay region? Back Bay region. Boston? Boston is right. And they're on the way. They have $25. Remember, you're going for $1,500. Now, how much of the 25 will you try? 15 15 okay. In what city do you find the left bank? Memphis? One answer now. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's Paris. You should have known that. Oh. It's a pretty easy question, yeah. They now have $10, Groucho. These are the cities of the world, you know. This is not necessarily right. the United States. All right, now you're down to how much? $10. $10. Here's your third question. How much will you bet of the 10 $5. $5. In what city do you find the Bowery? New York. New York is right. <laughs> you have $15 now. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 15 will you try? No, then you'll be out of luck. <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> now, in what city do you find Knob Hill? San Francisco. San Francisco. Oh. And the lineup and grand total is twenty-five dollars. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealers. Now we'll soon know who's going to get the chance at the big question, because you see, at this point, the um, newlyweds are leading with. Two hundred and five dollars. Oh my dear, they must be smart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as long as you're out here, newlyweds, I guess we can tell you that the uh, secret word is still door. Oh. So if you'll stand by now while oh, we. Oh, it's a good thing I rode on that streetcar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the secret word is still door, and our other contestants, of course, have been off stage, so they don't know what it is. You can bring them in now, fellas, please. We invited some veterans of the Spanish-American War to the show tonight, and also some American Army draftees of this war. Um, I'd like you now, Groucho, to meet Clyde Black and Roosevelt Gray. Come on in here, fellas, and meet Groucho Marx, please. Uh, welcome, kids, to your bet your life, and if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Uh, Spanish-American War vet, uh, Clyde Black, eh? And a drafty. You're the drafty. Huh? That's right. Clyde Black, uh, aren't you uh, pretty old to be drafted? Uh? I, was Spanish, uh, I was in the Spanish American War. That was 52 years ago. How, how old are you now? 72. Clyde? 72. Well, you're a fine-looking man. <laughs> if I didn't know that you'd been in the Spanish American War, I'd take you for about 60. Thank you for the compliment. It's no compliment. I'm telling you the truth. You know. <laughs> Roosevelt Gray, huh? That's right. You're the drafty. How, how long have you been in the Army? Two months. Four, four months? Have you written your memoirs yet? <laughs> That's right. Where, where are you from? Texas. 
Texas? Where are you from? Uh, Texas. Clark? Both from Texas, eh? You're what, what part of Texas? Fort eh? Mason, Texas. Fort Mason, eh? Are, are you married there, uh, Rizla? Unmarried. You're unmarried, eh? Well, don't feel too bad about it. After all, you got a mess sergeant now. Eh? <laughs> He'll sew your buttons on, eh? What sort of work did you do uh, before you were so rudely interrupted, Roosevelt? Eh? Well, I was a farmer. Uh, now I raised different crops, such as watermelon and peas and cotton and corn. Have your own place there? Eh? Yes, sir. Own farm, eh? What do, what do you do for a living, uh, Clyde? Eh? I'm special representative of the Colorado River Board of the state of California. Well, you live in California now. Uh, eh? I certainly do. You don't like Texas? Eh? Well, Texas is a good place to be from. <laughs> My advice to you is don't go back there. <laughs> Do you have any particular problems in the Army, Roosevelt? Well, not so particular, but I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> well, you won't get anything on the rest of us, huh? <laughs> when you make up your mind, be sure to tell the General, Roosevelt. Huh? <laughs> well, what do you mean you don't know where you're going? Well, I don't know whether I'm going in the infantry, or Corps of Engineer, or tanks, or airplanes, or what. I see. Well, here's an old soldier. Perhaps you can profit by his experience. What branch do you suggest, Clyde? Uh, Calvary. It's pretty good. Did you, you prefer when you were in, huh? That's what I preferred, yeah. Why? Because I was raised on a horse. Isn't it pretty tough to get on the cavalry now? They're not even taking horses, are they? <laughs> not even draft horses, huh? <laughs> They're not even drafting draft horses. <laughs> what, what made you decide to enter the Army, Roosevelt? Well, the draft board. Now, come now, Roosevelt. It's not that easy. You, you must know somebody on the draft. <laughs> <laughs> what was your rank in the Army, Clyde? Buck Private. Buck Private, huh? How long was your training period? Seven months. And how long is your basic training? Uh? Fourteen weeks. Fourteen weeks, huh? You mean the boys today accomplish in fourteen weeks what it took uh, Clyde seven months to do? Well, I Why guess, is that? I guess because they're having that more streamlined than it was then. Are you referring to the wax? <laughs> How were the wax in your day, uh, Clyde? No wax. No wax, huh? How oh, come? Because no woman was loud in 40 miles around army camp. <laughs> That's why your training always took a year, I guess. <laughs> the soldiers were always on maneuvers 40 miles from the camp. Huh? <laughs> You mean they were like going to the library and reading newspapers? Is that what they used to do? What did you fellows do when you come into town on a weekend pass, Roosevelt? Huh? Uh, well, I guess the same as what soldiers did back in the Spanish-American War. <laughs> you mean you two go 40 miles to a public library? <laughs> They're just crazy about reading and literature. These <laughs> what is your rank in the Army, uh, Roosevelt? Private. Well, what is, your, what is your ambition? What would you like to be? A civilian. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we're all full up, eh? <laughs> but leave your name at the front office, and if anything turns up, I, uh, we'll give you a ring, eh? Well, if you're the type the Army's taking, uh, I'd say our future's in pretty safe hands, as well. <laughs> now then, you're going to play your bet your life. You have to beat our other two couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500. That's the DeSoto Plymouth big question. I can't tell you how much our other couples won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The newlyweds are still ahead with $205. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected questions on Abraham Lincoln as your category. Now, here's your first question. How much will you bet? Well, $20. $20. You're going to bet not, the whole 20 Not, not no. the 20 $10? $10? What do you say, Clyde? You're a partner in this, an equal partner, you know. Well, I'll agree $10. $10, okay. What was the name of the battlefield where Lincoln made his famous address? Gettysburg. Gettysburg is right. And we're off to a good start. We now have $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? 15 All right, 15. Roosevelt? Okay. What was the name of the man who assassinated Lincoln? Uh, Booth. Booth is right. <laughs> They're climbing now. They have $45. All right, you got $45. Here's your third question. How much of the 45 will you bet? 25 25 Okay. What was the name of Lincoln's wife? Nancy Hanks. Hanks. One answer between you now. Come to some uh, definite conclusion. Her maiden name was Nancy Hanks, Nancy Lincoln. 
No, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. It's, it's Mary Todd Lincoln. Oh, I thought Nancy, mother. I thought it was mother. mother. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Well, that's, that's a shame. They've dropped it twenty dollars now, Groucho. Well, you're still on the run. You got twenty dollars. Uh, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the twenty will you go for? Fifteen. 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 Okay, Clyde. Okay. All right, Lincoln first gained national prominence as a senatorial candidate from what state? Illinois. Illinois. Illinois is correct. <laughs> and they wind up with thirty-five dollars. And that means the newlyweds, with $205, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Friends, when you're in the market for a used car, one of the first things to consider is where to buy it. The reputation and experience of the dealer is very important to assure you of a good value. You'll find your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is a good man to do business with. He has a wide selection of popular makes and models to choose from. And when you buy from him, you can count on getting a reliable used car that'll give you plenty of top service. You see, a DeSoto Plymouth dealer has a reputation to uphold, a reputation for fair and square dealing. So for a good used car at a fair price and easy terms, be sure to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. And here comes the winning couple, the newlyweds, all ready for their chance at the $1,500 question, Groucho. Well, here you are, kids, the newlyweds, and this will give you a nice nest egg if you win this. Huh? Yeah. All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help in the audience. Here it is. Ready? History books aren't always accurate. Remember that and tell me, on what hill was the Battle of Bunker Hill actually fought? Bunker Hill. No, no, I'm sorry. It was, it was Breed's Hill in Boston. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $210 in the quiz. $205. $205 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the best of Groucho from the You Bet Your Life series. Don't miss the best of Groucho on television, too. Also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, see the DeSoto Fire Dome 8 tomorrow. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't stick your neck out in traffic. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Coast to coast.